had an opera, well, you did hear there's not as much to say about it. Um, had an opera, you know, it appears in the Shenang Ben Sao Jing, but it doesn't have any type of like archetypical formulas. In the old days, like back then in the Han Dynasty, like there's no formulas that actually, popular formulas that contain ad and opera. And uh, in the Materia Medica, standard Materia Medica that's taught in TCM school, there's like one formula that has Shashen in it, but that's Bay Shashen, Glenia Literalis, and not non Shashen ad and opera. Um, there's plenty of formulas with ad and opera in it, but they're not like part of the stand, like the most common 350 formulas or the ones that you have to learn in school for your board exam. Uh, all that being said, so moving, uh, Shashen. So Shashen, yeah. The, so I guess the story about Shashen is, uh, there's another story to tell. So um, at some point, we're going to get to Katanopsis, and Katanopsis is called Dongshen, and Dongshen is Dong is like common or the party or everybody, and uh, Shen is root. Um, and we use Dong Shen in the medicine as a substitute for, as a replacement for Ren Shen ginseng because ginseng is very expensive and, or, yeah, ginseng's really expensive and Dong Shen is just expensive at this point. It's crazy because at some point it was like Cotonopsis Dong Shen was like 10 bucks a pound and ginseng was 150 bucks a pound. And now ginseng's like 300 bucks a pound and Cotonopsis is 60 bucks a pound. Cotonopsis has gone up incredibly, mm -hmm. uh, the, the price per pound has gone up exponentially in the last five years. Because people are using it and putting it, gotten it. Well, yeah, yeah, if, and then also, yeah, and the material, the quality of the material has gone down too. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, we're about, we want to talk about sh uh, Adenophora, actually. So the whole story about Adenophora goes back to, uh, we're in uh, Shandong province, and it's uh, 300 years ago, and we're out in the field, and we're trying to harvest ginseng, and it's like all gone now. It's all gone. We can't find it. So I have a bunch of people that want to buy ginseng, so I'm just going to start harvesting stuff that looks like ginseng. Um, and one of the things that I'm going to find is Cotonopsis. Another thing that I'm going to find is Adenophora. Another thing I'm going to find is um, Platycodon. All of these plants were used as adulterants for ginseng in this weird little period like 250 years ago. And they were all called Shandong Renshan at some point, which was Renshan from Shandong province. And then they started being able to identify these things, you know, and then there's these quotes in some of the old pharmacopoeia where it's like, you know, Dongshan is okay, but it doesn't, it, Cotonopsis is okay, but it doesn't have the ability of, of warm tonification of ginseng. Ginseng is warm. And it also has the ability to tonify all five organs, whereas Dongshan is just neutral and it primarily only tonifies the spleen and the lung. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't have as extensive a function and it's not as strong. Um, mm -hmm. And then, so then we move, and then at some point, the, you know, and then Adenophora is like an even further outlier because Adenophora is now cool and sweet as opposed to just sweet and neutral or ginseng, which is sweet and warm. So we're gonna talk about Adenophora. Adenophora, at that point, there's 36 species of Adenophora in China. 30 of them are used in folk medicine as legitimate substitutes for non shashen But in the pharmacopoeia, there's only two. It's uh, Adenophora stricta and Adenophora tetraphylla. Adenophora stricta is known as shashen and Adenophora tetraphylla is known as Lunye Shashen, and Lunye describes the patterning of the leaves, which is radial, like they mm -hmm. poke out from the stem like uh, spokes on a wheel, whereas Stricta, the leaves are alternate. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and what we're looking at is Adenophora, the one that's in the garden is Adenophora potaninii, mm -hmm. which is known as Pau Shashen, and this might be like number five on the list, you know, where you have, I have stricta, and then I have tetraphylla, and then I have a couple other that are probably more common, and then I get to potaninii. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at some point it's used and it's not totally uncommon, but if you're just going by strict pharmacopoeia definitions, it's not non-shashen anymore. Mm -hmm. 
And it's interesting because if you just like look at the pharmacopoeia, like in the in the bookstore we have 2010 Chinese pharmacopoeia, and it'll define the medicinal non shasha, and then it'll just then it'll give you the legitimate the uh, Latin binomials for the the medis the the plants, the botanical origins of that medicinal. And if you look at each edition of the pharmacopoeia, the botanical origins of the medicinal might change a little bit. And so maybe 50 years ago there was more available species, and now they're just they've just decided it's these two. But it's sort of a, a gray area, and that's something to consider. Mm -hmm. So while we're use, we're harvesting something that's not pharmacopoeia version of non shashen, you can find a lot of Chinese sources that will have it listed as a source of non shashen. And so there's like a strictness, right? Like pharmacopoeia says that it's only these two things. Maybe like a kind of generic version of the medicine says it can be these five, and then you know, and, and when you're living in some particular province like Jiangsu or something, you'll have twelve Adenophora species that you use and not as non shashen that aren't necessarily acceptable. And then the questions with adulteration, it's like you want to have non shashen, you think it's all stricta or tryptophylla, it, it might not be, because then that gets back to the very the difficulty of discriminating the material when we just have the roots, mm -hmm. and then we cut the roots smaller and smaller, it's gonna be even more difficult to differentiate. If you have um, the whole plant material, it's really easy to differentiate the potaninii that we're gonna harvest, particularly when it's in flower, the flower of potaninii looks nothing like the flower of stricter or tetraphylla. Mm -hmm. Stricter and tetraphylla have these little teeny flowers with this little cup at the lip of the flower. Um, and potaninii flowers it almost looks like Jagong's flower or uh, Platycodon granifloris flower, mm -hmm. where it's quite big. And then the petals they open and spread like this. Mm -hmm. And the tetraphylla and stricta flowers, it's like they don't even open; they're just like upside down coffee cups. Mm -hmm. um, so usually, when we want to identify plant material and it's difficult to identify the plant material, we want to get a, a whole plant sample in flower. Mm -hmm. If you have it in flower, it's like mm -hmm. thank you, Jesus. Um, <laughs> Did you say the lumina shashen was the tetraphylla or the stricta? Tetraphylla. Oh. Yeah. Tetraphylla, which is weird too, right? Because it's like they, it, the tetra is th three. Mm -hmm. And four. the. Four. Yeah, four. And so four, but the uh, Adenophora tetraphylla actually has three or five leaves. Oh. Yeah, but most, most have four, but if you look at a lot, you're like, whoa, you know, anyway, so. Let's go pull that thing out of the garden. Let's, and and let's consolidate cool. these roots too. So, that, so part of my work up here has been drawing all these things out and trying to find things that we that would be high quality that we could grow in the Pacific Northwest that would be equal or superior to the products that we could get from China. Um, you know, and carry on their tradition in a way that would be respectful to the culture um, and uh, the, di the difficult part is that there's no uh, analogous growing region in China to the Pacific Northwest. <coughs> um, like places with this temperature they have maybe like maybe kind of monsoon season in the summer or if they're at this latitude they freeze in the winter or you know and like you know and we have the rainy winter and that's a huge problem if we had like a freeze in, like that we have a um, Raymania here and the Raymania doesn't do well here because the Raymania wants to freeze in the winter oh. like wants frozen soil in the winter oh, that way I can't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean the other thing about Raymania is Raymania releases root growth inhibiting hormones mm. and so it should primarily be grown as an annual mm. Mm. So leaving it in the ground longer doesn't really help, but even if, but you know it wouldn't be as catastrophic if if the ground froze, which is weird. You know you're like oh isn't it primarily because when the ground is frozen it's actually dry, mm -hmm. relatively speaking. Does anyone else want to help shovel? You've got more shovels. I'm just afraid to. Oh you oh you got one. I see. Like last time. <laughs> yeah, and you got it. A lot of space to take. It takes yeah, practice. I'm a little bit worried about the, well, I mean, after making my statements about it, I, well, you can, like, go in on the other, go in over here mm -hmm. and just keep trying to go deeper and, and I'll work on this other side. We're almost there. I mean, it's pretty much smooth.
done, but well, we're in the danger zone at this point. Like we're kind of moving it, and we could pop it at this point, but we might lose a bunch of the... <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a good sound. <laughs> <laughs> some lateral roots. It does. The roots are very different. Yeah, so we can see like this is this this year. I just probably go back in. Yeah. Okay. That interested in that one. And this is two years old. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really after that large, like the tap root. Yeah, pretty much. Because that becomes like the piece. Like our our best piece, right? And then it has some of the markers of quality where it's like, you know, a certain thickness and a of us. That, that's how we, one of the ways we would want to evaluate it, you know. Thicker and longer pieces are of higher quality. But, I mean, that's, I mean, you see kind of the other thing too, where it's like, because, like the platycodon went crazy essentially of mm -hmm. all its excess generations of growth and it turns into this like knotted mass of twisted roots and they're, and they've lost some of their defining characteristics because of it, whereas this is still in the ideal window of two or three years for these plants. And so it hasn't developed too much craziness going on, although a lot of the excess root hairs and the transverse rootlets is a little bit weird, and it's likely because the soil gets so hard, it's not a deep soil layer. Mm -hmm. And the Angelica sinensis does the same thing. It may not, it barely makes a tap root, and it's mostly all these transverse roots and root hairs. Mm 